Hello everyone, how's it going? So today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I recently got introduced to a game called Gaslands where you basically build like post-apocalyptic like Mad Max looking vehicles and you customize them and fix them up and make them look really cool. So I have an example here for y'all. This is a tank I just finished up. It started off as a yellow Hummer H3 for a dollar at Walmart and I fixed it up, made it look pretty cool and now it's going to be my tank for the game. You basically add little guns and stuff like that. If you're already a fan of Gaslands or you already know about it, and I apologize for the explanation, but there's some people on my channel that don't know what, what Gaslands is, so that's why I did a quick little intro. So now I'm going to show you all what I'm going to do. We're going to customize this, uh, this little rig right here. I want to make it into a war rig. It's a class in the game. It's a little bit of a larger vehicle. You require kind of like a larger, a larger game to play it, but I'm going to be customizing this and showing y'all step by step how I normally customize my, my vehicles. So let's get into this box and start it. This truck was $8 at Walmart and you don't have to buy something that's $8. You can make your own or go even cheaper than that and get like a used vehicle. It doesn't matter because you're just going to really, they're not going to stay shiny. That's you're gonna mess these things up basically. So first I wanna see this thing even disconnects from the truck. Oh, it does. It's just like a little pressure ball. I just had to pull a little harder. I didn't wanna break it. But now that they're separated, first thing I normally do when I'm doing one of these projects is take a little piece of sandpaper and sand off most of the shiny coating because what we're gonna be doing is um, priming this, adding a base layer of paint that's not shiny and this thing kind of opens up. I don't think I'm gonna really be putting anything inside of there. I don't wanna really worry about this car just yet. I will customize it later for something else, but, or maybe I can customize this thing as a wreck because in the game you're allowed to like launch wrecks basically in front of other cars to stop their progress. So anyway, we're gonna get down to sanding this. So this is, this is actually paint, so it's not a sticker. All right, so we're gonna start sanding. Basically just roughing up the surface. Anyway, these cars are supposed to be like post-apocalyptic, like old and rusty. They're not supposed to be brand new looking. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the primer I use are basically just like matte black um, acrylic paint. It covers most things pretty quickly. And since the truck started off as black, it's going to be even easier. Then after I'm done, I usually wipe the surface down with something just to get all the, the paint off because you don't want all the sanding residue and stuff to mix with your acrylic paint. All right, I'm going to show you all another step that I normally don't do, but I actually want to do this because this trailer is a little too new looking, so I want to rough it up. All right, so basically, I'm just taking my Dremel here, and I'm going to just add some cuts and some scrapes to this truck. So I'm basically just making this thing as rough looking as possible because these things have been through a lot. So you don't want them looking brand new. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and give it a little primer. I keep my paints in these little containers instead of like the big like bottles they come in. It's a lot easier to, to only use what you need and they won't dry out either. And when you're doing this, if you don't have to be neat, just cover up as much as you can or as much as you want. And then when you do the the final paint, obviously that's when you're going to be more detailed, more focused on not getting it where you don't want to get it on. This is just a base coat so that no matter what color you go with it, it kind of pops out. And I like to cover the wheels and everything as well. 
Normally I take my time a little bit more, but I'm making a video. I don't want to make it extremely long for y'all. And I might, might cut some of this out during my editing, but y'all kind of get the point. We're just covering up this vehicle with, with some paint so we can add different paint later on down the road. All right, cool. The trailer's done. We're going to do the same thing to the rig. This one's actually pretty shiny, so... This is actually what you want, like for the bare metal to start showing. It'll look really, really cool. Give them the matte black treatment. Alright, so normally what I do is I put a little dab of hot glue gun. Hot glue on here. And I hold it for a couple seconds. And it will take off the paint in that area that I just applied, but it's going to help us paint the rest of the truck. So now you have a little grip. And I am going to be painting over these windows because I'm not going to leave them open like that. I'm going to cover them up and I'll show you all how in a little bit. that thing dry. I always put my brushes in a little bit of water so they don't dry up with paint on me. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I do my little my little window covers. You need like a little piece of cardboard like this and a soda can. I usually pre-paint them black so that it's easier. And you can just use a pen if you'd like, but I have these little, they're fids for paracord, and this is how I make my rivets. And I learned this from a guy on YouTube, this wasn't my idea, but I'll try and link his channel. I learned a lot from that guy. But I want to put, I want to block off this one, make a little panel for that, for that door. So to make a panel, you just kind of want to more or less find out how big it is, so. And then just cut out a square. You see. That door's not very big, so I'm gonna make a little armor panel about that size. I think that would look good around that size. So I might as well make two of them, one for the other side as well. Make the other one a little bit bigger. Because I, I like mismatching my armor sizes. I don't like making them all the same size because I imagine whenever you make these in a post apocalyptic scene or world, you're going to use whatever metal you can find. You're not going to be able to just be picky about what sizes they are. So now I move it over to this side. Then I trace it. Like I said, this was free. This is just a soda can. Be, stupid, be careful when you're cutting these in half because you don't want to cut yourself. But. Then I flip them to the side that's going to be facing in and then I poke some little you don't want to poke all the way through you just want to apply some light pressure and you make some little rivet marks I think you can even use a ballpoint pen because soda can is not very thick you don't need anything special lightly pressing with an ice pick would work or a ballpoint pen then you just flatten it back out but I don't know if you can tell but it has little little protrusions now kind of look like like rivets or bolts and normally I just put a little bit on here 
and then put my cardboard behind it. So now we got two little panels that we're going to put on the doors. We're just waiting for this to dry a little bit more. So I got two panels there. And now I'm going to show y'all some of the little 3D printed figures that I've purchased online. So what do I want on this rig? I think I've been thinking I wanted to want to use this little little grappling hook kind of deal. And I kind of want to put a bumper on this thing. So we'll see if this bumper looks good on it. It has a couple machine guns on it. And we're going to need to defend towards the rear. So a little turret I think would fit. I'm just pulling some of this stuff out just to pull it out. And then we'll decide if we use it all or not. I'm going to put a couple skulls on it. These double skulls also look cool. They're like basically two pieces glued together. So I'll put three skulls on this rig. It's a big rig, so I want to put a bunch of cool stuff on it. And then I was thinking, oh, well, it's a pretty cool little flamethrower. I could paint the tanks red. Put a flamethrower on it. And let's see what else we got. A couple little turrets here and there. Facing one way. And these are some other little random armor panels that I'm going to put on the windows of the rig and the back of the rig. So I'll take a couple of those. And some of these random little plates just to put on the trailer and make it look a little more reinforced. And then towards the end, if I decide that it looks a little too, um, oh, we'll put double flamethrowers. Why not? Good thing is I already have all this stuff here, so I can add whatever I need to it later. Since we painted the trailer first, it's pretty much ready to glue some stuff onto it if we want to. I was thinking of putting this hook facing backwards in case you want to pull something or maybe on the side, I don't know, you want to hit a car with this thing and take it out. But The turret kind of makes sense right here shooting over the cab of the truck. That would look pretty cool. When you're gluing stuff on these trucks, don't be scared too because if you mess something up, you just snap off the super glue and try again and glue it anywhere else. And even if it looks a little messy where you where you remove the glue, it doesn't matter because these things are meant to be messy and beat up, so. All right, so now we got the flamethrowers on there. I think I'm gonna put a single 50 caliber right here. Facing back, that will look cool. I don't, I don't think I wanna use both. But the good thing is you can always add to this later. Armor panels here, here and there. Kind of just spread out. And all these plastic little armor plates that I'm making, before I bought these, I was just making them by myself with soda cans, so. So don't feel like you have to, you don't have to buy any if you don't want to. Now for this bumper, I really want this bumper on here, but as you can see, it doesn't reach to the back. So I'm going to have to add a piece of 
something here to go across so I can glue that bumper on there. I think I'm going to use a piece of the soda can. bumpers on there Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go over the truck one more time with primer, and then I'll be back after that. Alright, so we're going to paint this one yellow. So I know I wasn't going to paint this thing blue, but I'm actually going to paint it blue.
So now I'm going to paint all the gunmetal gray stuff. So I'm going to get some gunmetal and just take a little small detail brush. Now we're going to move on to adding some rust effects. But first what I normally do is I just grab a dry little brush here with some gunmetal gray. And I find all the spots where I'm going to add the rust. Right there probably on these fenders. So you just grab a little bit. Right on the napkin. Now we can work on the trailer. Alright, the next part is going to be just adding the shade to it. I'm going to use this uh, color wash tint, French roast, but I got to wait for all this to dry, so we'll be back soon. Alright, the last part is going to be adding the color wash tint because it brings out like the shadows and the details and stuff, so have some right here. And I'm just going to grab a brush and apply it. This is really easy. You just kind of dab it on there So one thing I'm going to say about this uh, shade is this is like a chestnut, it's almost like like red and brown mixed together. Uh, and it, it looks a little dark but it, it really isn't like black so 
don't use like really black or dark shades because it'll kind of wash out all the the color it'll cover it it's kind of like you primed everything again it doesn't always happen but like if you're already painting something a dark color you don't want to add something like a black uh, shade or anything like that like color wash tint you want to make make sure it's kind of like a little bit lighter like that 